Hi guys, Mary, Queen MLV. It is Tuesday, May 17th, 2K11. And it's been a couple weeks since I recorded. I feel like I'm in confession. It's been three weeks since I've been in my last TTMD. Um, here's what's going on. We are trying to move to our farm. Um, we have two houses and we have been working and have the kids in school in Las Vegas and visit the farm whenever we can and we're trying to reverse that. So when school's out, the plan is to get to Minnesota to the farm and that is, it means shutting down my business which is 18 times as much work as the usual work and so I've just been too busy to do anything. Um, we did go to the farm for spring break. That was fun to spend um, 10 days up there. And um, I did discover that um, I was looking for something to do at the farm. And that's, you know, never difficult. Especially with a friend who is always willing to start a new project with me. Um, I actually did start a new project. And it's about, it's just a quilt top. It's about 80% finished. So um, I have that to look forward to when I get back up there. It's all laid out. I just need to piece it. It is traditionally pieced. It's it's just a cute, um, a cute no pattern thing that um, we saw in a quilt shop and just copied. Anyway, um, while I was there looking for something to do, I was looking through all of my quilts to see if there was anything that needed finishing and I discovered that I have a stack of ready to be quilted quilt tops up there. Some are wall hanging, some are quilt tops. Um, and I have 21 of them at the farm in the house. Now, I think I have three or four more out in my quiltery, and that doesn't count the ones back here. So, um, that's a lot of quilting to be done. So I've got to, I've got to spend some time quilting and get some of those off of that stack and onto the walls and onto the beds, and then, uh, then people will know what I do because they're like, oh, you quilt, but you don't have any quilts can't get them finished. Anyway, um, that was a revelation to me that um, I have that many that are just waiting to be finished. Um, let's see, what I have done is I've been doing a lot of sewing rather than quilting. Um, I made two quilt blocks needed, which I can show you yet, but next week I can, maybe. Um, sewing, my, my girls have started, I've got a one who just turned 18 this week, last week, and a 14 year old, daughters, and um, they have taken to wearing skirts, which is the thing at their schools, and um, you can imagine me shopping for skirts with them, no matter what the shirt costs, skirt costs, I'm thinking I could make this for four dollars, right, so, um, especially when you don't care, you know, I buy really good kind of expensive on sale um, quilt fabrics, but for skirts, I don't mind just buying whatever Joanne has on sale or with a 50% coupon. Um, you know, a yard of fabric for a skirt, it costs essentially nothing. I've got elastic here, I've got um, thread here, so it's just um, a yard of fabric that they like, which, like I said, with a 50% off coupon at Joanne is just almost nothing. So, in the past couple weeks, I have made six skirts. Three, three for each of the girls. Um, these two, this one, I mean, this is just, I took one of their skirts. First, I was making circle skirts. And I thought, you know, these are fun. But I took, I was washing one of the skirts that I bought for them. And I looked and I thought, this isn't even wider at the hem than it is at the waist. This is just a rectangle. So literally um, 17 inches of fabric cut, you know, across the across the thing and, and uh, hem the bottom, elastic at the top, and there's your skirt. So that one, I mean, a few minutes. One TV show I'm making these, and then this is for the little one. Um, literally one TV show I'm whipping out skirts. Um, the circle skirts were kind of fun. They I have 
each of them has a, a black and white one. So here's here's the other girls. That's just kind of cute with a two inch um, elastic band. And then this one has such a sheer fabric. It, it's really pretty, but you can see through it. So I did just put a lining in it, which just means two circle skirts sewn together. Um, then this is my younger one with the purple and There's another one that has run away. Okay, I had six skirts here, and there are five. So a skirt has run away. I have per two little, aha! You can run, but you can't hide. Here's the older one, this blue one. So, um, all kind of different. So they, all, they each have three different styles, but really, really, really fast easy stuff to do. So that kind of just fit in between when I couldn't sleep and had a TV show to watch. Um, prom. Not often do your daughters, um, especially seniors in high school, celebrating their last year in town kind of thing, end up saving you money. What happened was years ago, and I mean 14 years ago, 14 and a half years ago, uh, my husband and I were king and queen of a Mardi Gras ball. And um, I was actually pregnant, and the ball was six weeks past after my due date, so I had to have a dress um, fitted to me while eight and nine months pregnant, guessing how big I would be six months after six weeks after I delivered. So that was a challenge. I ended up with a very very versatile dress, and the dress that I picked out, which I thought which the um, seamstress and I thought would be more forgiving if I was smaller or bigger than I thought I would be, um, had spaghetti straps. And at the time, I was so puffed and my shoulders and arms were so big that my husband said, you're not wearing spaghetti straps, are you? And so um, I actually had the seamstress put, it's, it's black velvet, take from here and put a v-neck onto it with long sleeves out of velvet and she did a beautiful job so my daughter sees the dress she's going through all of my fancy dresses and she sees the dress and she says oh I would love this if it had spaghetti straps instead of sleeves I said hey you know I can do that so I took that buddy's shoulders and sleeves off and put spaghetti straps back on and she wore my dress to prom. So here, here's the dress with the spaghetti straps. And um, she really lucked out because, um, the back's just black. She really lucked out because I had spent so much time coordinating accessories and everything for this ball and I had so much help in doing it that when she wanted jewelry and shoes and everything, um, but the corsage, I had everything she needed. And um, so she ended up looking very, very nice. She's much thinner than I was um, right after I gave birth, but it, it flows real well. And she actually did also wear my tiara. And um, people were asking her all night if she was um, the queen. And she said no. Her standard answer was no, she wasn't the queen of the prom. She was um, the prom overlord. Um, and if you knew my daughter, that would make perfect sense to you. And her little boyfriend, it was a masquerade theme. And so I got them on Etsy, I got them the um, black freestanding lace masks. And he decided he was Batman. And so the two of them were quite the combo. Anyway, she was um, beautiful. And so I spent some time altering a prom dress. And let's see what else I did. Ended up making two cakes since I've seen you because the day before Cinco de Mayo, which would be Cuatro de Mayo, uh, my older daughter comes in and says, oh, Mom, I volunteered you to make a cake uh, for Cinco de Mayo and we need a sombrero cake delivered to school by 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And so I made a sombrero cake. And that photo is no longer on my camera, but it is somewhere. 
I know I put it on Facebook, so it should be somewhere, and if I can find it, I'll post it. The second cake is her birthday. She did turn 18, and I made her just a really pretty simple um, white cake with uh, cream cheese frosting, and I have a picture of that for you at the end here, too. So, did make two cakes. That was fun. Um, oh, I'm taking up knitting. Because, you know, when you have way too much to do and you don't have enough time to do the crafts that you already have and you miss some of the crafts but that you can't spend any time on because you, when you do have craft time, you're spending time on the crafts you're in the middle of. What you really need is a new hobby. Um, I crocheted as a child. I did everything as a child because my mom um, was great about that. Um, so I could crochet. I never felt I was really good at it, and once I, I learned to crochet, I mean, I mean knit. I learned to knit first, and never got real comfortable with it, never got real good at it. I wasn't bad at it, um, but by the time I got to where I could do it, my mom introduced me to crochet, and I never looked back. So, um, I haven't really knitted, and since I was probably a preteen, um, I do have something. Oh, I should have I should have brought it out because I know where it is. Maybe next week I'll show it to you. I did I did do one thing in knit that isn't. Remember broomstick knit broomstick lace that came around in the. Um, it became popular around the time, around the time that burnt orange and avocado green matched, and of course they didn't before and haven't since. Um, but in the in the mid seventies, um, broomstick lace was popular again. I think um, I think it used to be done with broomsticks. Broomsticks, and in the seventies, they came out with a plastic broomstick you could do broomstick lace on, and I was fascinated by that. And I did make a an orange poncho out of broomstick lace, and I still have that. I don't think I know positively. I've never worn it. Um, that is technically knitting, I think. I think. Um, it's not knitting and purling, but I think it's knitting. Um, so I did that in high school, but other than that, I haven't knitted. So um, my book, my book club ladies are just such a great bunch of girls. I love this. I love those women. And we uh, are looking at, I'm actually missing the book club meeting this week. Um, cause it's in Minnesota and I'm in Las Vegas, but, um, I had talked about doing some classes of, um, paper piecing or quilting or one of the ladies does, um, spins yarn and she hand quilts and she does amazing things. One of the ladies is a fabulous needle pointer. Um, a lot of them quilt. They, they all have these wonderful hobbies. And I had thought that we could get together and do little project in a day, learning from each other projects this summer. And then this one girl kind of jumped the gun and said, anybody who wants to learn to knit socks, I'll be teaching, once everybody gets up here for the summer, I will uh, be teaching how to knit socks. And I said, I'm in. So she said, well, uh, it'll go smoother if everybody knows how to knit and purl. So, I am refreshing my memory on how to knit and purl, and I have the casting on done, and I have the knitting, and I want to practice a little more on the knitting before I try purling, because um, I think it's not that different. I think once I'm knitting, the purling will come easy. So anyway, I, I have been practicing, and she and I said, well, you know, what size what size uh, needles and yarn are we going to do for these socks? And um, these are the these are the needles. They're size two, bamboo. And they're kind of small. And this is the yarn, which is uh, sock yarn. Who knew? I didn't even know they made sock yarn. And I hang out in the yarn, yarn department. So here's my sock yarn. And here are my little needles. And so I've been practicing casting on and knitting. And then I thought that it might go a little smoother if I used um, like a worsted, um, worsted weight yarn and standard size needles, which would be a size 8. So I got these needles, also bamboo. And... Um, so I am I am going to take up knitting socks, um, which is cool because in Minnesota everybody needs socks. It gets kind of cold. So um, I am also making a I'm making two actually.
this is going to be a book. I have, uh, I'm making two of them. Um, I got a tutorial online from a book, actually, but I'm making mine from this um, little portfolio cover, and I just dropped my scissors. Anyway, this isn't glued down, but I'm making... I thought the girl who's teaching me should, should um, have a gift, because teaching me knitting can't be that fun. Um, and so I, I also have all these... I mean, between knitting and crochet and the needles, I've got all of these crochet hooks that need to be put somewhere other than the floor. And so I need an organizer for that. So this is going to be, this is the fabric I used from the skirt, the cheap Joanne stuff. So this is going to be glued down here. And um, scissors, needles, short, short needles here, like crochet hooks, long needles here, like, and then, and then, I'll glue that down for the inside, so it'll be like that. And then on the outside, I have a I have a cute idea for how I'm going to do the outside, if it'll work. Because I cut these things out from the insides of my two things. This is fake leather and this is plastic. And I'm going to, first off, try my glue on this and make sure that I can sew that fabric in. And then second, try um, the cover method I want. I'm going to try on these spare pieces to see. Anyway. Don't know how it's going to look because I don't know if my idea will work. It might. So I'm I'm kind of designing that. It's different from the tutorial. Um, but I'll show you those when they're finished. And then um, the only other exciting thing is that similar to the daughter who came, same daughter who came home and said, we're going to have the sombrero kick tomorrow. She says, oh, mom, seeing your dodgeball, um, I have a team. There are six of us and um, you're making the dodgeball jerseys. Um, they're going to look like the dodgeball players from the dodgeball movie. Um, so, you know, they can't just be one color. They've got to be yellow jerseys with red trim, different red for the neck and the, and the sleeves. And so, new project, six, six jerseys, but I have a couple weeks, I think. So, anyway, that's what I'm up to, and I will be, um, back to quilting soon. And, um, hopefully I will be back to videos more consistently because I've missed several weeks. So you guys have a fabulous week and it's good to, good to see that you guys are carrying on without me and this project you didn't think, don't wait for me. Just keep going. I'll catch up. Um, those are just looking phenomenal. So anyway, have a fabulous weekend and hopefully I'll see you next week. Bye.